Welcome to another episode of Ways Out Back. If you're new around here, my name is Zach and I'm the author of the downloadable guide on how to convert your cargo trailer to a camper. So if you're interested in that, there'll be a link down below in the description. So what do we got to look forward in this episode? Well, we're going to keep working on this trailer. So we're going to do the floor, we're going to do the ceiling. So if you're into vintage campers, or if you are into cargo trailers, or if you just like watching what's going on, stay tuned, let's get started. So I think our first step is, I'm just going to pull off all this paneling on the lower section all the way around here. I'm going to get this off, then we're going to peel the floor off, see what we got underneath, vacuum, clean it out really good, and then I'll show you the construction foam adhesive that I'm going to use to glue this down. So first off, let's get these panels stripped and get this floor out of here. So holding down the fiberglass body, the shell, the frame, what they've used is they've got these screws going through here. Well, they're bolts, but they're self-tapping bolts there and there. Those are going right through into the frame rail. And then there's this bolt back here. This goes through to a piece of angle iron that goes, runs along the back. And that this is really what bolts it down, these ones here. So these are the main bolts that hold it down. And... Uh, they were rusted right solid. I just ground them right off and we'll replace those with some nice new bolts. So I ran into a little bit of a problem. I was only planning on doing the back here and then uh, once that was done moving forward. But this center rib here goes all the way from that backboard all the way through to the front so I think I need to keep that the same I think we should rebuild this exactly the same not taking any shortcuts so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull up this piece of plywood too and then put that rib all the way in here and then I'll have that rib to attach the other pieces to glue the other pieces to here's how I supported the roof it's just going out to the wheel wells and it feels nice and strong. Okay, so now I'm just gonna rip up this plywood. It's just the same as over there. We're gonna rip this out anyways and then clean this out, get some fans in here, get it drying. And one thing too that I've discovered, which I wasn't really, I did not know this, this foam has absorbed a ton of water. So it's just really, really, really heavy with water. So I think I'm gonna to have to replace all the foam in the floor just so that you have that nice R value that these uh, traders are known for. So it's looking pretty good. I vacuumed it all out and then I've been just having this fan running to dry it. What I want to do is run, as I mentioned before, that one piece center support through the whole thing. But what I'm going to make that a little bit stronger. What I'm going to do is take two three quarter inch pieces of wood and laminate them together, glue them and nail them all the way through. So that'll give me some nice good support all the way through there. This, uh, the ribs, the cross ribs, where they're just going to lay on um, the metal ribs underneath the supports, I'm just going to use normal two by four and just rip it to one inch thick and then set that there. But like there, where there is no metal rib underneath there, for that one, I'm going to use the same thing. I'm going to take two three quarters, laminate them together, and they can tie into that center section. So I'm going to try and make it as strong as possible. And then what I'm going to do is take a piece of plywood underneath with a two by four under there and a jack, and I'm going to put upward pressure right on that fiberglass so it's nice and solid. And then when we glue it and set it down with some weight on it, it's going to really set good there's not going to be a, a bow, a dip underneath there. It's all going to be glued up solid. I'll show you the glue that I'm going to use. Let's go inside. I'm just going to rip those pieces of wood and then I'm going to show you the glue that I'm going to use and how I'm going to nail this together. To build the ribs, I'm using three quarter, cut one inch and then nailed together and wood glued in between. Once this is dry, this will be very strong, as strong as one inch wood can be. So then this is 
the length of it. There's that center one. And then I'm going to start putting together the side ones. Anywhere where the frame, it's just sitting on the frame, I'm just going to use normal uh, two by four and just rip it one inch. How I'm going to install this is I'm using this construction adhesive. I like this. I debated about this quite a bit, you know, whether you use the spray uh, like a contact cement. But the problem with contact cement is if there's dips or if there's irregularities, it won't fill it. Then you'll have this gap. This here will fill that gap. So I'm going to glue down my supports first. And then once I've got the supports in there, I'll fill in the foam, put in the foam. Just show you what I'm doing underneath. This is what I'm doing underneath the trailer. So I've got my jack under there with a chunk of angle iron and this piece of plywood. And I'm pushing up on that fiberglass so that it doesn't sag. That way when it bonds to the foam, it's going to be nice and tight. There's not going to be some kind of bow in it or a gap. It'll also help if water ever gets in there, it'll help it run out to the channels on the sides. So I've got a few more supports to build. Let's get them laid out in there and then glue them down, glue them together and glue them down. And then I'm going to cut my foam, but I'm only going to lay the foam and as far as the first piece of plywood, because I want to make sure that I've got that jack under there really putting up pressure and I'll put some weight on the top so that it'll really pinch that foam. So we'll get a nice, good cured panel all sealed together. So here we are the next day. So you can see that's set up. Now the glue's set up. I've still got that jack on the bottom. 24 hours for that glue to set, so it's getting close. And now we're just continuing on. Remember I said I was gonna do the back and the front. Well, that didn't work out because see these pieces, they extend underneath the next piece of plywood which totally makes sense because you want that continual strength through it so i'm just continuing on so i just took the shower pieces and put them back over top of that floor and i'm working my way forward one of the things that maybe just to keep in mind if you're doing this is there are some fiberglass repairs that are going to be need to be made see that crack there and same on that side, I've already fixed it, and on that back corner, same thing. And I think it might be from the weight of the body on the frame, you know, bouncing along, probably cracked it. So once I reinforce that, and then once we have our cabinets back in here, and the walls and everything, I think that'll provide a lot more structure. Again, I was actually hoping to reuse a lot of the foam, but the foam is very, very heavy. And if I get some time later, I'll just weigh it for you. But it's got to be at least triple the weight of normal foam, just full of water. So that's the plan. Now I'm going to fix that fiberglass. I'm not going to show you how to do that again. We already talked about that. And then I'm going to put in this floor here. I'm going to take apart some of this wall just so I can drop this piece of plywood down nice and tight to this wall and then slide it underneath this door sill here because I want it right underneath that door sill to carry the weight. But I want to be able to drop it really tight tight to that wall and then slide it that way. Okay, so let's uh, let's get going here. So that's it. I still got the jack underneath right in this section here, jacking that up, keeping that sandwich together. And now I'm going to start on the roof. I'm going to put in some insulation and then some panels. I am going to just pull down all of this roof, all of the ceiling here. I'm going to take it right down. I'm going to put in these spars right here. I'm going to glue them in there and fiberglass them. So 
So here's my solution to the roof issue is I've got these pieces of wood they're half inch strips because I still wanted a little bit of insulation underneath them they are glued to the roof with that construction adhesive and then I did a few little bands of fiberglass just to kind of hold it and you can see those supports there that's for the cupboards they go up underneath there holds the roof up and then I've got the ribbing all the way back. You can see all the spots where I've grounded out and we fixed the fiberglass up, but it still needs to be painted. So it's just clear fiberglass right now, but it's thick. So it's pretty good. I pulled out some of these supports and it holds itself up. But what I think I'm gonna do is just do one panel at a time. So here's what our foam looks like when finished, our insulation. So I've got the strips routered out, the supports in the roof. And then I've just cut out the opening for the fan here. So what I'm using as a template is the old foam. And then I'm just adding the cutouts for the, the ribs here. So let's get inside. I'll show you how I install it. Here's the electrical for the fan. So I just notched out the insulation. I ran the wire here, just tin taped it to hold it up there in place. Then I'm just gonna stick these butt connectors right in here nice and tight so that um, they don't interfere with anything. Uh, these connectors are actually special ones and I highly recommend them. I'll post an affiliate link below. These heat shrink, which is important, but they're also full of glue. So when you heat them up, the glue seals them completely and also stops them from vibrating loose or getting a bad connection. So highly recommend that if you're going to be using any connectors, unless you're gonna solder all your connections. But those old cheap connectors, I wouldn't even bother using. These are the only ones I'd use and they're actually not that much more money. Okay, we're gonna wrap this video up. So we've got the ceiling done. Everything's sheeted, insulated. Remember we got our ribs in here. It's really, really strong. I've installed some of these supports just in case, but honestly, I could pull them out and it would be fine. It, does, it hardly moves, but I thought, why not until we've got our cabinets all done, I'll keep the roof nicely supported. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, the affiliate links will be below for anything that I've used. The next video we're going to talk about is the walls. So we're going to get the paneling on the walls. To do that, we're going to have to pull the windows out, reseal them, and put them back in, and then put our walls panels back in. So again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next video.